from the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston. It's the Cube, covering IBM Think. Brought to you by IBM. Welcome back to IBM Think Digital 2020. This is the Cube, and we're really excited to have uh, two great guests on. Michael Jordan is the distinguished engineer with IBM Z Security. Michael, good to see you again. Welcome back. Thank you. It's good to be back. And Matt Whitbourne is the program director and offering lead for Z15. Good to see you, Matt. Thank you for having me. Guys, Z Z is a good place to be. <laughs> Great quarter, 61% growth. You got to love it. <laughs> Congratulations. Got to be feeling pretty good. I mean, Thank other than you. what we're going through. But from a business yeah. standpoint, Z powered through, didn't it? It, it, it did. I mean, we're 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 really pleased with um, uh, the contribution that Z continues to make. You know, for our clients, especially right now, given everything that's going on, business continuity, scale, resilience, security—they're just so important for our clients and the platform. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna talk a lot about this. Um, you know, maybe Matt, we could start with you, just in terms of, you know, you talk about uh, cyber resiliency. You hear that a lot. Um, and I think it maybe means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. What does it mean to Z? Yeah, for us, I mean, you know, we kind of start in many ways with like the, the NIST definition of it, which talks about the ability to anticipate, withstand, recover, you know, adapt to all of these adverse conditions that you might face or stresses, compromises and attacks on your systems and your, and your cyber resources. So it's a really important, you know, top of mind top, uh, uh, point for a lot of clients who are thinking about this. Um, both from, I guess, the resilience when it comes to systems and also the data as well. And from our standpoint, you know, Z has been at the forefront of resilience for many, many generations now. Um, whether that's the scale that our systems are able to provide, the ability to tap into more capacity as needed, whether on a temporary or permanent basis, because um, you never know when a, when a spike might be occurring. Um, and especially with, with clients going through digital transformation as well, the fact that we can talk about our solutions being designed for seven nines of availability, um, and that's the reason why clients like Bradesco rely on us is for their resilient banking platform, or Department of Treasury in Puerto Rico depend on us for, uh, for a highly available solution. So it's, it's never been more important for clients. So Michael, from a technical standpoint, um, I mean, I go back to the Rack F days, and, I, and I, I used to ask, you know, why is it that you know, the mainframe had you know, such good security. And it was explained to me, you know, years ago, well, because you knew everything that went on, who touched what, you know, there was a you know, clear understanding of that, clear visibility of that. Um, but maybe you could explain just, you know, for the lay people, from, just from a technical standpoint, why is it that, that Z has such strong uh, cyber resiliency? Sure. So, so some of it, I think, is there, there's two two aspects that I want to mention. First is, you know, culture, right? You know, the, the IBM Z, you know, development team and 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 broader, you know, design team. We have it in our culture to build systems that are secure and, and robust. That, that that's kind of part of our our DNA. And so, so it, it's that mindset when you look at, you know. Technologies like parallel sysplex and geograph geographically dispersed parallel parallel sysplex GDPS, you know those are ingrained in those technologies. But the other capability that we have, or I should say, um, you know, benefit that we we have is we own the whole stack, right? We own, you know, the hardware, we own the firmware, um, and we own the software that sits on top of there in the middleware. And so whether it's uh, resiliency or whether it's security, when we want to design and, and build solutions, you know, to make optimal solutions, you know, in either of those spaces, we can actually design and architect the solutions, you know, both at the right point in the stack and across the stack as needed to, to really deliver on these capabilities. You know, Matt, one of our, our, our partners, ETR, holds these uh, CIO roundtables and. And one of the CIOs said, yeah, we really weren't ready from a, a, a resiliency standpoint. Uh, we were too focused on, 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 on DR and kind of missed the boat um, on, on business continuity. Too narrow focused. I, I, I presume you're, you're hearing a lot of that these days. I, I wonder if you could just tell us about 
some of the things that you're seeing with clients, maybe the conversations you're having and how you're helping sort of broaden that capability? Yeah, sure. I mean, to your point, I mean, nobody really could have quite predicted, you know, what we're, we're dealing with right now. But, um, you know, we have had over many generations of the Z platform, um, uh, you know, clients who've, who've deeply partnered with us to try and make sure they have a, a highly available you know, environment for, for business continuity. And yeah, not just thinking about things from a DR perspective, but, you know, what they can do to fortify and make their solution sort of more resilient, you know, on a, on a day by day basis. Um, I mean, one of the things, you know, Mike was talking about some of the inherent capabilities we have in the platform, the fact that we build, you know, our systems with that additional capacity kind of baked in, which means that for so many of our clients, you know, in the first um, in the first quarter where they were seeing these huge amounts of, of peak workload kind of coming in that they needed to be able to deal with. The fact that we design our systems to be able to just kind of gobble up that workload with that, what we call dark capacity to be able to be turned on at the drop of a hat is tremendously important because not only do you need to be able to be obviously just resilient in terms of the applications, but you need to be able to deal with growth, you know, as you're going through that. The other aspect, which is a, is a new capability with, with Z15 that kind of builds on what we can do with that dark capacity um, is this concept of instant recovery. And what we're actually helping clients do there in terms of fortifying and making their, their environment more resilient is letting them uh, tap into that dark capacity when they're going through restart activities of partitions. Um, not just thinking about unplanned scenarios, but actually planned outages as well. So what that really helps with is because you always have to do planned maintenance, you know, on your systems, you know, on your partitions of your of your um, of your systems or your Z environment. So what we're doing is saying when you're going through that restart sort of process, um, whether it's the shutdown, whether it's the bring up of the partition or the middleware, um, or even in fact actually helping you catch up kind of for what you what you lost while you weren't sort of processing workload. We turn on that extra capacity in the system automatically for this boost window that we're that we're helping our clients with. And not only do we do that, and Mike's point about owning the stack means that we can deliver that in a way that there's no increase in IBM software costs during it either. So, so we're always kind of looking about what we can do to kind of move the ball forward to make you know clients' environment even more resilient as well. I've always I learned from my mainframe days many, many years ago when when a when a vendor comes in and shows a new product. I always ask the question, what happens when something goes wrong? I mean, it's all about recovery. Right? That's always been one of the mainframe strengths. Mike, I want to ask you about data protection. I mean, it's a topic that, again, means a lot of things to a lot of people. You know, does it mean, you know, backup? Uh, there's data privacy, there's data provenance, there's data sovereignty. W talk about data protection from a Z prism. Sure, so, so our point of view on, on data protection is, is we view it as a, a as a multi-layered uh, proposition. It's not it's it's not just one thing. And in fact, we we view it in the lens of a, of a broader you know layered cybersecurity strategy where you know data protection and and you know in this case you know talking about in, in, encryption and being able to encrypt data on a massive scale um, is, is the foundation for you know a layered cybersecurity strategy. Um, and, and providing capabilities for clients to, you know, protect data at the disk level. Um, with, with Z15, we also introduced the ability of actually being able to protect the data as it flows through their storage area network um, through something we call fiber channel endpoint security. And then layering on top of that, you know, host-based encryption capabilities, you know, in the operating system, whether it's, you know, file or, or data set level uh, encryption, uh, and, you know, then on top of that, they can layer additional capabilities uh, for things like multi-factor authentication uh, to protect, you know, your privileged identities from being compromised or being able to do, you know, damage to your system. Um, and then, you know, building and layering on top of that, things like security intelligence uh, and being able to monitor and understand, you know, what, what's happening across the system. So I was talking to a developer the other day, cloud app, pretty, you know, non-mission critical. But I asked him, do you use encryption? And he said, yeah, we could, but we don't because it kind of slows us down a little bit. So I'm wondering how you deal with that trade-off of performance versus protection. The Z, how does Z deal with that? Sure. So that's that that's a great that's a great question, and 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 that actually goes back to 
you know, our, what we did with, with our Z14, so the, the generation before, um, and, and I think we've, we've improved that with with the z15 and I'll, and I'll get to that in a, in a bit but one of the, the the barriers that we recognized is exactly what you said is the the you know the cost of doing encryption is prohibitive um, and what we did is we have a, a a cryptographic accelerator that's integrated into our microprocessor uh, that's capable of encrypting you know so each core is capable of encrypting up to 14 gigabytes of data per second. And if you multiply that by the number of cores that you have, you know, a fully configured, you know, Z15, Matt, what does it have? How many cores do we have in that? 100, well, we got 190 with, uh, with a 100, Z15. 190, so, so do the math, right? 190 times, you know, 14 gigabytes per second. It, it's an encryption powerhouse, and, and that can all be done synchronously with extremely low latency. So. We we have the horsepower to do encryption on a very broad scale, with you know very very low overhead, and and, and that's what our our clients are are leveraging and taking advantage of, and with the Z15 that we we announced and, and made available last year, uh, we ac actually have now compression that's built into the microprocessor, so you you can actually compress the data um, first and then encrypt it. And there's a twofold benefit to that. First is now I have less data to encrypt, so I've lowered my encryption overhead. And at the same time, I've, I've managed to preserve my storage efficiency. So it's a, it's a twofold benefit there. Matt, you know, people talk of, about Z, they talk about it's, it's open. It kind of all started back when you guys brought in Linux. And now of course it's, it's much more than that. Um, but I'm wondering how open plays into this notion of cyber resiliency. In, in, in some respects, they're, they're counterpoised, but, but how do you sort of square that circle for me? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I kind of look at it as, as when it comes to openness and, um, and digital transformation, it's, it's kind of doing it without compromise. Um, and that's kind of the way I look at the, at the Z platform because you're right, I mean, the fact that we have the likes of, of OpenShift um, support um, on the Z platform, or you can use you know, Ansible for, for doing automation. I mean, we're, we're always looking to try and make sure that we support from a, whether from a management standpoint or development standpoint, you know, we'll, we'll use whichever tools, frameworks, languages are, are appropriate, both on the platform and to be able to integrate into a hybrid cloud wherever you want to go. Um, but that's why we're, we look at it both from the perspective of, what it really means to have mission critical applications and why it's you know why that is the key point about banks insurance companies etc continue to trust z as the as the home for their system of record because they want to get the benefits you know the best of both worlds so they want to be able to have the security the resilience and the scale of the platform but at the same time they want to have flexibility to be able to you know use cloud native technologies to be able to deploy them on the platform and then as mike was sort of talking about the exciting thing for us is, is even going one step further that says, if you do want your data to move around your hybrid cloud for very good reasons for certain scenarios, being able to have that capability to protect the data, not just encrypt it, but manage the privacy of the data as it flows out of Z to kind of take those Z characteristics into the hybrid cloud um, is something that you know, a lot of our clients have been really, really excited to, to take advantage of with Z15. You see that about this we're, we're, oh, go ahead, Mike. You got we're some something. We're out. turning Matt into a security guy. Did you see that? <laughs> yeah. I think everybody's got to be a security person these days. I want to ask about zero trust. You know that that term is thrown around a lot. Uh, you know it, it can get kind of buzzwordy, but yeah, see people always have substance. So I want to ask you guys, what what does zero trust mean to, to you all? Uh, so, so I think there's you, you, my, my view of zero where we're at from an industry from from zero trust is is very similar to where we were at with cloud. You know, going back a handful of years, where if you ask ten different people what you know cloud was, you'd get ten different answers, um, and, and none of them were probably wrong. And, and so I think you know we're a very very similar state in terms of our our understanding and you know market maturity around zero trust um but there's you know at its core you know the 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 idea is you know we've been focused on you know protecting you know our environments uh using you know a castle and moat type of approach 
um, and you know, you know, protecting the perimeter, uh, and then trusting everything inside of inside of that that you know that that moat, if you will. Um, and what the, the the zero trust is a recognition that that's not sufficient, and you know, and then if you look at that in the context of our evolving and changing uh, in environment and moving to hybrid multi clouds where um, the, the notion of a perimeter is gone, you know, that, that strategy and approach for, you know, protection it, it doesn't hold up. And so we, we need to evolve that. Um, and, and we need to have, you know, you know, move from the notion of um, operational trust to a, a notion of, of, you know, technical trust and building, you know, building um, more sophisticated mechanisms for doing authentication, understanding uh, broader what's happening across the environment and, and feeding that into, you know, decisions that are made in terms of who gets to access what data. So. Yeah, good. Uh, Matt, bring us home. Uh, overnight, you know, this pandemic has really heightened our awareness of, of cyber resiliency, business continuity, kind of changed our, our mindset and definition of those two things. But give us your final thoughts on, on this topic. I think it's probably just put in the, into sharp focus, um, you know, really what it, you know, what it means to have, um, you know, mission critical applications that are right at the heart of your, of your business. And, you know, you come to realize very quickly that, that if those services are not available um, to your, you know, end, end clients, I mean, it can have such, you know, long lasting implications. And so I think as people are considering, you know, their strategy when it comes to, you know, resilience of, of applications, of infrastructure, and all of that in the context of, of business continuity. I think you know, people are gonna, gonna have a much sharper focus in the future to really see, you know, what, is, what does it mean? And it's the lifeblood of their business if they're not able to, to operate and serve their clients. And probably as well, more and more applications that maybe weren't considered mission critical in the past will be considered mission critical now because it's not just the back end services, but it's it's the way that you communicate with clients. So a lot of that I think is going to play out as the way that you know people think about their business continuity strategy in the future. <laughs> You're right. Video conferencing has become mission critical, hasn't it? <laughs> Guys, thanks so much for coming to the cube. Again, you know, uh, keep up the good work. Uh, I really appreciate your time and, and your insights. Always always great talking talking Z. So thanks again. Thank you. All right, and thank you for watching everybody. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE, our wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the Think 2020 digital event experience. Keep it right there, right back, right after this short break.